This is Witchbase News for Friday the 8th of July 2022. I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week EDMC gets a useful upgrade via cannon. More details emerge on the nature of Salvation's Proteus device. There's something on the horizon as open war erupts with the Thargoids and more. To make sure you don't miss any of our videos hit like and subscribe and remember to click the little bell icon and select all notifications and if you'd like to help directly support this channel you can also join our Patreon via the link in the video description. Commander LCU no fall like one of Canon Research has this week released a new version of his Canon plugin for Elite Dangerous Market Connector that adds significant functionality that will be of interest to the galaxy's many explorers. The Canon plugin already houses some very useful tools such as the ability to direct pilots to places of interest for Canon's research requirements, a surface coordinate navigator, the ability to search online databases to display trade information, economy type or allegiances in systems near your location or the ability to report non-human signal sources or high prediction events etc. This new add-on called Target Intelligence checks a targeted star system against the Spanch database and colour codes it within EDMC depending on whether it's been visited before, has yet to be visited or if it's been visited how many bodies are in the system and how many of them have been scanned. Because the plugin is drawing information from a public database it's not location dependent. You can interrogate a system that is thousands of light years away just as easily as the system next door. I've linked below to Canon's video that shows the plugin in action and you'll also find a link below to grab EDMC and the Canon plugin for yourself. The creative types at Burned by Design in the UK specialise in burners inspired by science fiction and popular culture and this week they posted images on their Facebook page of their latest creation, an all metal handcrafted wood burner for the garden in the shape of one of Elite Dangerous's signature ships, the Falcon de Lacey Anaconda. We've reached out for more details but none were forthcoming at the time of going to press so if your outdoor space is significantly lacking in the very specific arena of anaconda shaped wood burners then I've linked below to their Facebook page where you can see all the images of the thing and find out more. They do bespoke builds as well. Coriolis barbecue, just saying. Just a quick reminder that LaveCon, the annual Elite Dangerous fan convention is taking place next weekend in Milton Keynes in the UK. Some of Frontiers community team and developers will be attending the event over the weekend and Frontiers fortnightly Elite Dangerous livestream Frameshift Live instead of happening on Thursday evening will instead be happening live from LaveCon over the weekend. As we reported in last weeks news the star system HIP22460 has become the focus of the community as the Azimuth Saga that has been running in game for over 18 months draws towards its conclusion. The system has an easy to obtain permit lock but since becoming a sudden galactic focal point the permit has been granted to all commanders. The community goal that sprang up in the system on Thursday last week saw the supermarket own brand messiah known as Salvation requesting deliveries of vast quantities of medicines and armour to the system in which he's claiming he's about to end the Thargoid threat for good. Unusually on Tuesday this week while the it's all going to be fine just bring me all the bandages CG was still running Salvation initiated a second CG in the same system this time asking the community to once again go on a guardian bin diving expedition in order to fuel up his AX super weapon which we now know is called the Proteus Wave. Whilst the initial uses of the Proteus device were moderately impressive subsequent firings of Salad Nation's daisy cutting super weapon have proven to be less so with its ability to actually still kill the cantankerous cauliflowers being open for debate. Undeterred Salvation is pushing forward with his plan to shove the single biggest stick he can possibly find right into the heart of the wasps nest and give it a right solid waggle just for the good of all mankind. 
As commanders began diligently delivering truckloads of Guardian rubbish bags true to form the Pleiades weeds of woe responded in kind and began arriving in the target system. Initially their presence could be noted by just some limited non-human signal sources but with the Thursday morning server tick things took a very definite turn towards non-standard. Shortly after the regular server refresh we began receiving multiple reports of anti-xeno conflict zones springing up in HIP 22460. Further, those conflict zones now had a visible threat level associated with them. That's important, I'll come back to that in a moment. And as if that wasn't enough the superpower capital class vessels that were stationed in the system to protect Salvation and the project to power up the Proteus wave were now themselves under Thargoid attack. Upon investigation it became apparent that the capital class ships had been fitted with experimental AX weapons and were fighting back against the Thargoids now invading their local airspace. Whilst the newly kitted out warships are able to easily take out the scout vessels attacking them they can't take down the larger Thargoid vessels managing to damage and expose their vulnerable hearts only it seems. Later in the day Galnet shared more typically deviant vocalizations from Salvation. The text contained some key details telling us more about their intended solution and the planetary permit lock of body 10b in the system that we reported on last week. It seems the Proteus wave device is being constructed on the surface of planet 10b and will then somehow be calibrated so that it interfaces directly with one of the existing Thargoid structures on the surface of the moon. The Thargoid installation will then amplify the EM pulse that emanates from the Proteus device theoretically shutting down every Thargoid vessel in range. The Thargoid surface installations are known to have an extremely adverse, almost allergic reaction to the presence of Guardian devices. When just one Guardian device is inserted into them they generate very powerful energetic pulses. This is something that can already be witnessed in game. If Salvation is intending to somehow interface a Thargoid structure with thousands of metric tons of Guardian flotsam and jetsam you have to ask is what we've been seeing from Thargoid structures over the last few years when exposed to Guardian tech actually what Salvation has been using and is intending to use here again. The same phenomena but now on an industrial scale. Salvation's super weapon has been proven to be somewhat impotent of late. It took the caustic coleslaw by surprise when it was first deployed but ever since it seems to have done nothing more except temporarily drive them away while simultaneously really annoying them. I can't imagine that plugging Proteus into their surface installations, the nature of which by the way is a complete unknown to us, is going to suddenly endear them to our fleshy meatbag way of life and cause their sudden withdrawal all the way back to Barnard's loop. I'd said I'd return to the conflict zone issue. All the newly rated AX conflict zones in the system are lows and mediums. As best we can determine there is no high level of conflict zone in the system. But if a high conflict zone doesn't exist in Frontier's mind then why have a low and medium? You'd surely just have low and high. So where are these high conflict zones and what can we expect to find in them? Could the Thargoids be about to deploy another tier of interceptor class variant to top the Hydra or is it something else? I've spoken on this channel before about how Caleb the Witch Witcherly specifically made mention of Thargoid motherships in the logs discovered at the Inra site in the DG Canum Venaticorum system. Further those logs speak about the site known as Carmichael Point and the events around the demise of Commander Jameson. Carmichael Point was destroyed by a Thargoid mothership. Commander Jameson deployed the mycoid anti-Thargoid virus that ended the first Thargoid war into a Thargoid mothership. Whatever happens we do think something is coming. Frontier promised consequences to the Azimuth storyline and it's getting increasingly hard to imagine the end of all this simply being nothing more than a Galnet article. The current community goal to fuel up the Proteus device ends on Tuesday. With previous firings of the super weapon it's typically triggered a couple of days after the CG ends. That would put its activation at Thursday or Thargsday as it's also known. 
the day when the servers tick over and stuff is added or changed in the game. Will the planetary permit lock be released on Thursday? If it is what will we see on the planet's surface? Will we perhaps get a look at the Proteus device itself? Where do you think this is all heading? What would you like to see on the surface of planet 10b and what do you think will happen next? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.